LEGO Star Wars has been going on for a really long time, having first released in 1999 alongside The Phantom Menace in theaters. And this year in 2024, LEGO went all out to celebrate the 25th anniversary of one of its most successful themes. This year saw a bunch of special sets, exclusive anniversary minifigures, and a range of other exciting releases to celebrate the occasion. In this video, I'll be taking a look at every element to the 25th anniversary of the theme while comparing it to the previous anniversary to see whether this year has truly been a good representation of 25 incredible years. What's up LEGO fans, it's LEGO Man Cam, and to kick things off I'm going to quickly skim through all of the sets that were released this year that weren't branded as 25th anniversary ones. We got the Clone and Droid Battle Pack, Ambush on Mandalore, the Onyx Cinder, the Bark Speeder Escape, the Crimson Firehawk, Ahsoka Tano's Duel on Peridia, Paz Vizsla and Moff Gideon's Battle, Luke's X-Wing Mech, and then the Captain Rex's Microfighter. Overall, this was a pretty decent lineup of just regular sets, with one from Ahsoka and a surprising three more sets from The Mandalorian Season 3. Other than that, we got another Junior set, another mech, and then just one more Microfighter, which certainly caused its controversies. And then we had just the one Skeleton Crew set as well, which was originally supposed to release in January, but did get delayed until August, and the show is still not even out since it's going to be coming out in December. Now let's go through all of the sets that didn't include exclusive minifigures, but were labelled as anniversary sets because of the exclusive printed brick that was included in there. We had the Droid Carrier, which was the May 4th gift with purchase. We had the Millennium Falcon, Invisible Hand and Tantive 4 MIDI scale models, the Moss Espa Podrace diorama, the Droidica large scale build, the UCS TIE Interceptor, Jabba's Sail Barge with the Luke's lightsaber gift with purchase, and then the large scale C-3PO. I'll also note the advent calendar is branded as 25th anniversary, even though there isn't an exclusive minifigure or an exclusive brick in it either. I think this is by far the most adult oriented number of sets we've ever gotten in a year, which I think definitely goes to show you the direction that LEGO is taking as a company. Now let's take a look at the 25th anniversary sets that actually include one of the seven exclusive minifigures. Now these figures differ from the 20th anniversary ones, as these figures are brand new and exclusive characters that LEGO has stated would never have appeared in a regular set, therefore they included them here. These sets were the Imperial Dropship and Rebel Scout Speeder, which included R2KT, we got another large scale R2D2 with Darth Malak, we got Darth Maul's Sith Infiltrator with Saw Guerrera, we had Boarding the Tantive 4 with Fives, the Creative Play Droid Builder Kit with Young Leia, the Imperial Star Destroyer with Cal Kestis, and the Desert Skiff and Sarlacc Pit with Nyan Num. Overall, these sets on a whole seem like LEGO chose literally the most random assortment of sets to include the minifigures in. Firstly, the large scale R2D2 I do not think would have sold very well if it wasn't for that Darth Malak figure, so I understand why they put him in there. Same with the droid builder kit, although I suspect young Leia is probably one of the most least desirable of these figures, myself included. You then had two more regular sets in the Sith Infiltrator and the Star Destroyer, which feel like any kind of sets that would just be re-released any year, which do make the exclusive figures in them feel like total bonuses, which I love. There was then the Tantive Boarding Diorama, which is a nice set, and Fives really makes it honestly just a great set. The Dropship and Scout Speeder Battle Pack remake is a weird one too in my opinion. I think this one would have sold fine, uh, but the R2KT does give it some added value, even though it's not the most desirable figure, but as a lot of people know, the message and the sentiment behind the character is just really beautiful. You then have the Sarlacc Pit and Desert Skiff, which would normally, I would kind of see it as just a regular set, but with the UCS Sail Barge coming out this year, it totally feels like DLC to me, which is again kind of odd to throw Nyan Num into. For the figure choices overall, I think this is a pretty solid bunch, especially Saw Gerrera, Darth Malak, Nyan Num, and Fives, who are all characters that we've really wanted for years now. My personal favourite is Cal Kestis, as although the figure is missing some detail I would have loved to see. Well, first thing I notice is he's not wearing a poncho. And Cameron! Right. He is one of my favourite Star Wars characters of all time, and it seems we'll probably never ever get a Mantis set, so this is like the next best thing. Young Leia is probably the most disappointing figure, it's just not very exciting as a Lego minifigure on its own, um, but by far the best part about it is the Lola droid, but then again, why could we have not got BD-1 with Cal if we get Lola with Young Leia? And then R2-KT is a good enough pink droid, which looks pretty cool. Now, I want to take a look at some of the extra things that LEGO did for this celebration, starting off with Rebuild the Galaxy. Now, the last few years, LEGO has brought out a special mini-movie each year on Disney+, 
We had a Christmas special, a Halloween one, and then one for a summer vacation. However, this year they went all out with a four part miniseries called Rebuild the Galaxy. For just a quick rundown, the series followed a young man by the name of Sig Griebling as the entire Star Wars universe is flipped, making Ewoks bounty hunters, Jar Jar Binks a Sith Lord, and so much more chaotic events. He meets the legendary Lego Jedi, Jedi Bob, and they attempt to save the galaxy. Now this show was honestly really great, I watched the whole thing, except for the god awful gonk droid that just would not shut up. Anyway, LEGO released three sets coinciding with this mini movie, one being Jedi Bob Starfighter, as well as the TIE Fighter and X-Wing mashup, and then in my opinion, one of the best sets of this year, the Dark Falcon. These sets feature some of the best minifigures from the show, although the TIE Fighter and X-Wing set is a serious letdown in comparison to the fun and creativity of the other two. Other than that, we got a new book release this year, the updated LEGO Star Wars Visual Dictionary. Now I have the original one of these and I absolutely used to love it as a kid, and this one includes a whole bunch of new fun facts and information, but most importantly, it includes a Darth Maul minifigure, which is a replica of the original one from 25 years ago. However, this one has the 25th anniversary logo printed on its back, which is completely different to any of the other figures we got this year, but I'll go into more detail about that in just a minute. Also, if you are new to the channel or you have seen a few of my videos and you seem to enjoy them, please subscribe because it's the number one thing that you can do to help out a small little channel grow. There was also another book release. This one is one of the craziest LEGO Star Wars products that I think I've ever seen. This was The Forces of Creativity. Now, in Australia, this book costs $240 which is absolutely insane. In the US, it's 150, which is again, still completely insane. For that gargantuous price, you get a coffee table book, as well as a bunch of previously unreleased concept art, and then a bunch of other exclusive paper or cardboard based items without actually getting any Lego. Like looking at it, it's awesome that they're going to show us that they were going to make a Zam Wessel minifigure a few years ago, but I would prefer if they just made one now. Anyway, what I want to do now is compare this year to the most obvious counterpart, the 20th anniversary. In 2019, LEGO released 5 anniversary sets which all featured exclusive minifigures, however unlike this year, these figures were the same as the Darth Maul that we looked at, being remakes of iconic figures with the 20th logo printed on the back. The first one was just an Obi-Wan poly bag, and this one just had the original Obi-Wan with that 20th anniversary logo on his back. The sets were then the Imperial dropship with Han Solo, the Snowspeeder with Lando, the AT-RT with Darth Vader, the Podracer with X-Wing Luke, and then the Slave One with Princess Leia. Personally, I much prefer what they did this year in 2024 compared to 2019, as the 2024 figures are actually useful, being brand new characters that everyone can appreciate. Whereas if you did already own the originals, remakes are pretty disinteresting to you. Remakes can be cool, and at the end of the day, these are just bonuses in the sets, so I'm not complaining here, but I'm just saying I prefer the new ones to get new and exclusive characters. Overall, I think this year was better than 2019, although 2019 had significantly more sets released overall in the whole year, but you can take a look at all of the sets in the video that I have linked in the description. So all in all, do I think 2024 was a successful year in honouring the legacy and 20th anniversary of LEGO Star Wars? My answer is yes, yes I do. There were some amazing sets and minifigures released, and I wish we would get these bonus minifigures every year, because they make all the difference for collectors, and when you think about it for kids, they're not going to care that Nia Numb wasn't canonically on the desert skiff, they're going to play with him all the same. Obviously pricing began to get a little bit out of hand this year, especially with that desert skiff, and seems to be getting even worse in 2025. However, I do have a video coming out soon where I'm going to be discussing this issue and how I go about getting all my LEGO sets for a pretty good price. But with all that being said, if you did enjoy this video, please feel free to subscribe as it helps the channel out so much and I will see you in the next one.